This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 636. Tuesdays, we've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, and here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And with me, I got a crew with us, first of all. On the other side, over in uh, the Monroeville, DMville, USA, Zombie, Zombie Central, Mall Zombie Central, USA. It is the site. Riz does come from just miles down the road from where they did film the original Dawn of the Dead. That is a fact. That's true. That's also, true. also, maybe more classically, right down the road from where they uh, they they filmed Zach and Mary film a, uh, film a porno. Make a this porno. is also true. Make a porno. Yes, this is also very true. I'm trying to I'm trying to make your joint more exciting. It's not really that exciting. <laughs> But he has a sheet. I mean, there's the a corner. sheet right down the road. It is. That is. Now we're excited. Now, I mean, now we're talking. But he's I'm with us. I'm not going to because I'm on the show now. So no. I can... Also with us is Chris plays games. No, he's the only mayhemer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. It is Mad Mike. Oh, so you so you don't try to pimp out Poughkeepsie? I don't know no. anything about Poughkeepsie. Really? Kenny Omega chose to come here to fight Phoenix. That, that is happening. That's He's all going. you need to know. Bad Mike, Bad Mike is talking loudly about indie wrestling. What show is this? Wow. Well, Raw sure didn't give me anything to talk about, so. Oh. There it is. I brought it back. I brought oh. it back. Oh. Anyways. I- uh, and we got all you guys. We got a we got a rogues gallery out there in the chat room here tonight on the Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us here. And of course, you guys can join us in all kinds of ways, including www.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. W's optional, uh, and you can find us on Facebook Live, where we are live here every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time for all your mayhem goodness. We just descend upon the internets. And together, nationwide, the Mayhem Nation, join us. Please also subscribe to... Oh, and also we have Ty Cross in the comments. Hi, Ty. Um, Hi. Now you're officially on the show. Um, I still don't know who that is. He's, he's just... <laughs> I'm just... I'm continuing the gimmick from gold. That, that's time. right. That's right. Uh, but please subscribe to us wherever uh, you can find us on uh, podcast and video form. Links over there at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, you can email us at that email address. Good times. Good times. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412-206-WMS0 at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook page, and the group. The Facebook group where you guys uh, converge with us as well with a lot of stories. And that's going to probably inspire a lot of our talk. Also, thank you to our streaming partner, the405media.com out there on the West Coast, carrying us at 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern time, every single day. So you can doze off to the sweet sounds of mayhem. Also, thank you for everybody supporting at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, our Patreon supporters at the fan of the show, $1 level, the longest running one right now. Bo Diggity! Woo! As well as Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlos Foundation for Podcast Betterment at the Pocky Club $5 level. You guys get special content over there. Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley, uh, Doc Remedy, and Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. And at the Pizza Club $10 level, Billy Effin Johnson. Patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show.com. Or no, no, that's too many dot coms. Patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Thank you, everybody that's been uh, participating over there. And literally, more than you know, keeping the lights on here in the studio. Uh, so let's get into it with uh, I, with stuff that's happening. I don't know. I have stories Sorg. in here from. Sorg. Yes. Um, There's a lot we, happening. We, we have a comment from the chat room. We do have a comment from the um, chat room. Um, from Ty, he says podcasts are so much more professional than YouTubers. I've never heard a podcaster open with "What up, it's your boy." 
Um, okay. I'm, I'm, so. I'm, going to, I'm going to make this a proclamation. The next Mayhem Underground, I will be saying after Midweek War, I'll be like, what up, it's your boy, Mad Mike? <laughs> I, I will now be doing that for the entire show. I feel like there has to be a podcast that's done that. <laughs> No, I'm pr- pretty damn sure somebody does that. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive. There's probably even a podcast called "What Up, It's Your Boy." This is also true. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Let's start the show off with some pontification. <laughs> and Alex Gar says Ty Cross has just left the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, Wheels is out there as well. That's yeah, awesome. I, I have I have the power to ban people. You do, and he does I use it very you... liberally. I mean, I won't use it. don't don't we all have that power? Well, yeah, but he's been using it lately. So <laughs> I've been using that's it. Okay, that's fair. Yes, and then the chat room went away. Uh, but anyways, um, so so first of all, I want to I want to point out. So this is a story that's come around, and God, I love. I, I hate love the uh, dirt sheets because the wrestling reports with three Z's. Uh, we, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. Are you still on delay back there? Yes. Yeah, we just got the wrestling. I swear. Um, I hate love the dirt sheets because um, you, you you read something. I don't know if I'm just hyper aware of it because I've been listening to Bruce Pritchard and Derek Bischoff podcasts, but well, um, you're also Bischoff. Also, also, I'm I I have a lot of journalism friends, and I realize when I read a story and there's actually nothing cited as a source, and I realize what the fuck are we doing, guys? <laughs> like <laughs> fake news. You, you want to go fake talk fake news. news? It's 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 like half of the wrestling stories out there these days, right? Sorg, it's always been fake news. I know. I, well, it's. <laughs> It is wrestling. It's wrestling. I, I so just... It's wrestling. It it's literally like it's kayfabe. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Plus, it, it's it, it's also clickbait. It, it's yeah. it, it's pretty much it. I remember like before, like when we were talking, when, when like a couple months ago, Facebook kept showing me these articles about uh, what was it like ten superstars that WWE doesn't like. And five superstars they do like, but don't really want to mention that they like them because they're special. Here's, like, here's, just, a, hint. Like, here's a hint. If they're just, employed, they like them. Yeah, it, it's just so <laughs> they can click, they, they get, get the clicks to the, get people on their website. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't care that it th- is not factual or if any information is correct. Or yeah, and we don't do stuff anything, like that. Although if, you won't believe what Mike Mad Mike thought about Monday Raw last night on the Raw wrap up. Yeah, you will. Wait, wait. Yeah, I, you I will. Think I can. Yeah, I think you'll, I can. you'll believe it. Yeah, no, I you'll can't. You'll believe can. it and probably be able to predict exactly what I said. Yeah. It stinks. Yeah. The end. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. Um, <laughs> what Alex, say, Alex, I, Alex I didn't mean to interrupt you. But Alex says, I came up with a clickbait joke. The punchline may surprise you. It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. Go ahead. Really, I didn't really mean good. to cut you off, but that was just my little. Well, like, so the story going around is that Impact Wrestling had meetings with WWE this week. It's real, um, and I have reason to believe from unnamed sources that that, that is completely true, uh, because you know that's how we that's how we talk, right? Uh, <laughs> there was one weird storyline to that. I'm going to let you finish, though. I want to come back to me when, well, when you're I, done. Sort of. And there's not much out from it, uh, except um, uh, apparently there was uh, supposedly uh, co- conversations before where they wanted to buy the the uh, mm-hmm. the catalog. And obviously they've been doing stuff with the catalog now with the WWE Network. Um, but it is, I, I think, you know, it, we, we've conversed about this before, about how, how you know, things these are kind of more open now, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's been... You know, it's a whole different world where uh, WWE is is kind of uh, cooperating with these, and and Impact has kind of turned a corner a little bit too. Well, it, it doesn't it doesn't help that half of their Raw roster and SmackDown roster is from Impact. Half? Yeah, uh, it, well, it, I don't know half, but us. Uh, let do you want to name the people who have been on Impact who are on Raw and SmackDown? Yeah, Joe Styles, Joe Styles, Angle? Xavier Woods, Angle. Yeah. Uh, rude. 
Rude, mm-hmm. Eric Young. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Yeah, there's there's a significant amount. Like, and that's not even getting into NXT. Yeah, yeah, it, it does make there's sense. There's a lot more. Yeah, I, and, and and notice the you know chummy with the Ring of Honor as well. Lash- Lashley, Lashley. Lashley. Yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. lot of Lashley. Yeah, so are you ready for that? Nine, um, are you ready for that best of uh, Bobby Lashley? <clears throat> I'm still waiting to see it. <laughs> that, that's oh, a joke. oh, I see. That's a, that's Cause, a joke. Because you know yeah, he hasn't had his best. Because Lashley's anything. not very good yet. yet oh, yet. um, and I didn't realize this. Uh, Alex is saying, I, I, oh, he says, I hope the real outcome of the meeting is that WWE just acknowledges impact on Raw and SmackDown. Well, <laughs> impact. We'll pay you one million, one hundred billion dollars to mention this on your weekly programming. WWE two hundred million. Do you have a deal? He says. Well, uh, remember the uh, Ed and Christian show? They did the whole like, yeah. Are yeah. we going to mention where AJ Styles first came from? <laughs> And they laughed in their face because mm-hmm. that's not going to happen. Absolutely. Um, but the no, weird—I mean, but they they do it on certain shows. Oh no, they do it. And I'm I'm going to mention well, something they... real quick. Yeah. Um, uh, Table for three. Twitter, no, the Twitter feud going on right now between EC3 and Lars. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> uh, Lars brings up the fact that. Uh, Dixie Carter's worst mistake was EC3. EC3 points out that Claire Lynch exists. Mm-hmm. And that's still not in the top five worst. It's no, not. no, it isn't. It's not because Orlando Jordan poured lotion on himself at one time. Jeez. Jeez. <clears throat> um, but. Oh, and, and also the, uh, the funeral thing. I still can't remember what what there, that was about. There were a bunch of different funerals. You'd have to be more specific. How uh, many one... people? Wait, are we are we mistaken on our, our on our death count? Um, with the uh, Lucha Underground, is, did Impact Wrestling after ha- actually have it first? No, 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 no. 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 Impact, just making, Impact just... didn't kill anyone. They just killed careers. No, oh. oh. except for Bully Ray. Yeah, that's true. Except for Bully Ray. Bully Ray Bully did Ray... have a resurgence. He surged after that. There was man, impact and wrestling he, like, was was you know, certain people will thrive in, in certain environments. Bully Ray, huge. EC three, huge, right? Uh Rockstar Spark, Drake Maverick, of course, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Gotta admit. Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode did Bobby real Rude. well towards the end there. Well, there, it, it also helps that they were playing to a much smaller audience. Uh, yeah, but you mean that's, that's why there's there's more chances because they're just throwing stuff at a wall. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. And that will, and sometimes off a train or into a train. Sorry. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Hogwarts. Mickey James. Hogwarts. And, and there's another one on Raw that was on TNA for a spell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Telling okay. you, there's a lot more than you think of. Yeah. 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 Hmm. And plus, there's a few popping up in the Mayon Classic too. So, oh yeah, yeah, and one that may have just been signed. Hey, yay, me a yim. Good yay, for you. Me a yim. Good for you. Yay, You've seen her at a few IWC shows back in the day. Um, I think I think she's featured on a Prime Wrestling uh, release that we have as well over at Indie Wrestling. Anyways, Wrestling.us. Broken uh-huh. Hardies, of course, sure. and they they use that that TNA footage um, to great effect in the in their uh, documentary that they did. So, um, I mean, and, and plus, I mean, look at what they did with um, Kevin Owens. Um, and they basically did the best of recounting of his storyline with El Generico, you know, in Ring of Honor using the footage. So, you know, Sorg, they should sign El Generico. Why haven't they done that yet? He's too busy with his orphanage. Oh, OK. I heard Prince Puma went there. Mm. That's that's good of him. That's good of him. Anyways, uh, some other <laughs> uh, kind of uh, heart softening uh, news. There was a tweet that went out by an Adam uh, Pasidi. I uh, say so he was just reviewing uh, some WWE performance center footage and saw something he had noticed before uh, in the studio where wrestlers rehearse their promos. Uh, sits a Dusty Rhodes puppet, as if he's still watching over things. Really touching. That's uh, very cute. It's awesome. That's great. And of course, Dusty Rhodes very big for. Uh, somebody that really helps with promo class, like, and of course, people in NXT really, um, you know, really hit by that, um, um, hit by uh, his his passing. And I believe, you know, we were talking about because 
um, when they came to Pittsburgh this last time. Um, it was a show that I did not go to. I think it was the second time NXT was in Pittsburgh, and it was the day um, that 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 does to get passed. You know, it's kind mm-hmm. of a rough one for them to detail. So, yeah, interesting. Um, anyways, I, no, I don't want to talk about that just yet. That's for later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's just some some kind of indie talk. Uh, we were we were kind of poking at it a little bit here before the show, uh, but I want to la- save that for a little bit later in the show. Um, man, I honestly have watched little but raw in indie wrestling, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a little light on things. I and I know okay, we talked about this last night um, on the raw wrap up, and it's been going around um, about uh, Brie Bella and uh, oh, Liv Morgan. Oh. Um, and I know Dave, Dave Podner shared, uh, going through Twitter and, you know, there's the, uh, trends and highlights, uh, when you, when you, uh, kind of look at oh, that's an empty couch, uh, fans fear wrestler is injured after WWE raw. There was a really big backlash about that after everybody saw what happened and it was nothing that they could really cover up. Liv Morgan, uh, was kneed in the face when, uh, Brie was giving the yes kicks twice. on Monday twice. night. Twice. She was kneed in the twice. face. Yeah. It oh, was in the head twice. Yeah. She went and down. They, I finally they, saw they the video. It was on their Instagram feed for a little bit. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, and, and I, I didn't want to get to this too deep last night, Mike. Um, you know, save something for this show, but mm-hmm. um, because you talk about like how they, they, they kind of shared that up to to the Instagram and stuff. I, I wonder if their social media teams are as in tune with the hey, that's something we probably shouldn't show because somebody um, actually got messed up. George, anyone who was ringside there. Mm-hmm. And saw Liv, Liv Morgan crumple mm-hmm. to the corner and roll to the floor. Should have been able to tell because that's there were that's the there other question right away. There that's the other question right because those are getting they're, those are getting pulled off of a video feed. I don't think they're ringside or in the no they in the arena. Rushing. What's that? They came rushing down to no no no. I'm, I'm talking about the social media people. No, oh, the social, social media, media people are ringside ringside they're yeah they're, they're like yeah. front and center yeah wait the hard cam yep yeah no so they're yes. doing that and they're pulling video like get video get feed gifts like that yep. oh, yeah i yeah. i need to um, learn more about this situation there was a they they did show one gift one like video mm-hmm. uh, that i i i've looked at over and over again Back into the I left. Keep on back into the left. Back into the left. The Zabuir film, um, but the video of the of the suplexes. Mm. Okay. Like you can see, like when uh, when both ladies go in, like go for for the ride squad go in to help. Liv is on the side. The referee is trying his best to tell her not to go back in that ring. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you can you can tell like he she's he's just going no do not do this she bolts to the ring for some reason gets underneath her and does a suplex which first of all is amazing mm-hmm. if she can do that she rolls out of the ring and like you can tell all three like all three of the people that are outside that ring are like not really feeling it right now they're, 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 worried, they're yeah. worried for their friend they were, yeah, yeah. Like, like um, Ruby was holding, like, coddling her, and and yeah. it was like one of those weird things where I felt bad. I, I, mm. I, like, uh, yeah, I mean, this is be, um, somebody saying in the chat that she's on. The, um, uh, yeah. Alex Miller is saying that uh, Liv is on concussion protocol, um, supposedly, and um, uh, you know, this is this is uh, what a uh, week and a half out from their big Australia show. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that is a big show for her mm. to be a part of and if she gets knocked out of that no pun intended um but but, but also i i also want to kind of frame this a little bit too because this is you know there's a big backlash and i know mike we discussed a uh, pretty deep last night on the show about you know Br- you know breeze dangerous and this and the other thing right um but there was a there was a tweet and i i'm sorry i can't remember who did <laughs> I it, can, that, says, I can look it that said me. hey um you know we we uh you know First, first and foremost, we need to we need to ask: Is Liv okay, right? Um, yeah. And of course, now we know she she might be on concussion protocol and everything too. So, I mean, things happen in the ring. Of course, yeah, yeah. ballet. Mm-hmm. You're right. Um, and it's 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 definitely a move that could be mistimed. 
Right. Are you looking for Bree's tweet? Sort? No, I don't think. Uh, did Bree have a response? Oh, she did. Oh it was no. <clears throat> oh, dude. live reading by the Riz. Wait, give me your best Bree Bella voice. No, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Riz. Before you read no. this, Bree mode. Okay. There you go. Every match on Raw is an opportunity for us to entertain our fans. Our intentions as WWE superstars is to win the match. She didn't never write this. In, never injure our opponents. Mm-hmm. Thinking about live tonight. Heart emoji. Oh, feet. Well, either way, this now, is going to be a tremendous storyline on Total that. Divas. See, see, the thing is, Bree seems like a genuinely nice person. Yes, I know she's my like, favorite. We Bella. all know. We all know this was not malicious in any stretch. No, no, Mad no, no, Mike. No. Who's your favorite, Bella? Um, that would be John Cena. Yeah. Ah, what about you, Riz? Yeah, no, John, actually, John, uh, no, John no, actually, my favorite Bella is Breezy Bella. I lied, Breezy Bella. Breezy Bella. Mine's John Laurinaitis. Okay. Okay. <laughs> or, is he still a Bella? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay, I, good. I, I thought I thought they were divorced or something. <laughs> He's still technically a Bella. <laughs> the uh, producer missing getting the delay laugh is pretty awesome in here right now. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> but like uh, Bree obviously didn't do this on purpose. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she feels bad about it, but at the same time, like someone needs to someone just... needs to tell her to slow down. Yeah, like, like the referee should be telling her to slow down. Mm-hmm. Liv should be telling her to slow down. Like, mm. let me sell these kicks, dumbass. Like, that's the whole point of them mm-hmm. is to sell them each individually, and they're supposed to get harder. Like, and uh, Jordan Grace, she got injured this past weekend, uh, but she made a good point. She goes, because Bree has made mistakes in her return in WWE. Mm-hmm. Uh not even counting the the kicks. Uh she almost broke her neck while diving. Twice. Ooh. Twice. Uh so she goes, I've botched five times in a match. So like she she goes, I know how hard it is. Yeah. Hey wrestling but, wrestling is hard, you guys. I'm not saying wrestling no. isn't hard, but you can't just take over two years off and expect to come back and not have some ring rust. Guys, let's go to the professionals on this one. Okay, real quick. Um, we do have a wrestler in the chat room. What? Yep. Yes, that, that? That, that's Ty Cross. Yes, we, oh, we mentioned his damn that? name again on here on the show. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we have some opinions from him. I'm sorry, I just closed the chat room. Um, he says, Good job, <laughs> he says, uh, that's, that's a tough spot to be in. You portray a group as uh, three women against the world. So you can't just, oh geez, it just disappeared. Um, so, so you can't just use call, use a call up because, uh, they're probably going to lose. So live is not being able to work. will probably really hurt whatever they try to do in Australia. So I think, I think this just turned into a tag team match. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll just be like, like Nikki and Ronda or something. As it should so, be, they'll stick the bells in there somehow. Yeah, that could be. I mean, I'm, they could drop in. I don't know. They could drop in like Alicia Fox or something. Well, you know who really should like if if they do want to keep it a six woman tag and they want mm-hmm. to call someone up. Mm-hmm. Nikki. Uh, Nikki Cross. Yeah, but she's a little more face down, isn't she? She can still start a fucking riot. Mm-hmm. Drake Maverick is a face on two hundred five and a heel on Raw. Must, nothing matters anymore. Yeah, that is Sword. true. It's all different worlds. Sword. He's a he's a heel on Raw. Uh, so I yeah. He, he, he led acting Raw general manager Baron Corbin against the Shield. Yeah, he is. But I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Eva Marie can you completely sound so defeated. You sound so defeated. Missy, right? Eva Marie can completely totally come back and be a Bella, right? I feel bad for Liv Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Liv Morgan yeah. is awesome, and the fact that she wanted to continue just further proves her awesomeness. Mm-hmm. It also means someone needs to stop her. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I said, that, that referee tried to get her, get her, like, stay on that apron and do not move until somebody comes in. Just, nope, I'm going to do the suplex. Just, and it looked good. It looked really professional. It, it was really professionally done. Mm-hmm. Says the guy who I kind I kind of wish she was in the middle so she could have been protected more, but you know, mm. you know, you, but uh, it's just it's bothersome. It's bothersome because they're going to keep putting a spotlight on Brie, mm-hmm. even though this is the second week in a row where she has shown obvious ring rust. There has been well, and this is something that's going to continue to happen. This there's been a lot of kind of. Um, backlash because you know talking about how the the divas are hurting the evolution right now and they're they're being put on the, the pedestal going into this um and we'll see what happens because again we are like promoting three shows simultaneously right now um, well no no they're only promoting two yeah i know we forgot evolution only, was a thing they're only promoting two they're not even promoting evolution yes. anymore but <laughs> anyways anyways but no guys let's uh That's shout funny. out speaking of wrestling uh go to indie support the Divas, not, uh, I'm sorry, the, the Women's <laughs> Wrestlers of Tomorrow. Damn it, we were just talking about it. I'm sorry. Um, and inc- including some great conversations we're having with those women wrestlers. Uh, <laughs> including our intergender discussion over on the Indie Mayhem Show uh, with our friends Honey Badger and Jinx and Marcus Mann of Rise Wrestling, with a Y, as well as um, as uh, uh, Emily Fear of the Talking Honor podcast over at PW Torch joined us. Uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Also, we have a lot of new releases and re-releases on our VOD platform. Um, look forward to some new updates to the site as well. We're changing a few things around on the back end. I'm very excited to get those out there. But also, you can check out where is where did I put that thing? If you hit our video on demand tab, that's where we're gonna find that what we have available over on Vimeo. A lot of the Night of the Superstars that includes uh, guys like Ric Flair, Matt Seidel, AJ Styles, Booker T, uh, Abyss, Tatanka. Guys, Tatanka versus Chris Larusso was a thing. Shelton mm-hmm. Benjamin, uh, Scott Scott Hall is a part of this. Brett the Hitman Hart as well actually was on the same show with aj styles and scott and the steiner brothers yeah but go check that out and also the best of team storm our friends rc dupree jackson argos and uh uh jack pollock all on there it's it's, jackson made it to the beach that oh he did make it to the beach yes he did with his title uh, I don't know. You have to check out the International Wrestling Cartel. What's happening there? Also, Proving Ground Seven, which involved like it was a uh, you know the graduating class of uh, wrestling of uh, of uh, the International Wrestling Cartel's wrestling school. Uh, about five graduates there uh, taking on the likes of DJZ, of burr, 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 Dylan burr. Dylan Bostic, and in a tremendous main event of Jonathan Gresham, Ring of Honor's Jonathan Gresham, the Super Indie Champion, defending against our friend Jason Gorey uh, as well. Uh, it was a hot night out there in White Oak at the uh, Athletic Association, and uh, that will be uh, hitting editing very soon and should be posted hopefully here by the end of the week on IndieWrestling.us. But go check out all the great titles from Rise Wrestling, IWC, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and Prime, not Prime, yeah, Prime Wrestling too. So all that old stuff's there too, uh, as well as uh, Premier Championship Wrestling and Water Rate Wrestling too. Had a lot of fun there Sunday night at the Water Rate Wrestling for iPay Per View that was on Fight TV. That'll be on the uh, on our platform uh, soon as well. Oh, here's another one that we have on the system: uh, Night of the Superstar Seven. Uh, Mike, uh, that's uh, I think that's the last time that I encountered one Chelsea Green, who uh, we were mm-hmm. just talking about, just debuted on. Just debuted on uh, uh, Impact Wrestling. Also, Jack Swagger, who also he, debuted he, on Impact Wrestling. Um, also, Thor, also Thor, Thor, somebody, Thor, Thor, somebody. Thor, Thor, yes. Thor, you mean Lucha Underground? What did yeah. I say? You said you're, Impact. You're saying Impact. I am saying Impact. I am you're, sorry. You're the same thing. Crossing the. No, you're not going to get me to watch Impact. Yes. Yeah. I'm working on it. They um, need to unblock me on Twitter first. Also, somebody had let Rey Mysterio out of the cage. Uh, in order to participate in this event too from Lucha Underground. So go check it out. It was a lot of fun. Big crowd up there in Meadville uh, as well. 
um, women's wrestling. And also, if you go to the Vimeo page, the entire pre-show is actually up there for you guys to watch, too, including our friends Katie Arquette, Jinx, um, the main event, and so much more. So go check it out, IndieWrestling.us. Uh, also, Ty Cross is uh, also represented on there. I, I guess I should probably say exactly. that as well. So, yes, some guy named Might Ty as well. Cross. Yes. Might as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to OD on, on, on plugging his name on this, uh, this, this episode. So, let me get back my tabs and figure out where the hell I was in this show. We don't talk about pizza yet. That's the thing, too, right? So, mm. um, I... <laughs> I, I was forever fascinated, or I want to talk a little bit about some interesting concepts in indie wrestling right now. Um, for you know, of course, this weekend, I, I like I said, I was uh, over at Waterweight Wrestling in the in the the famous historical uh, Turner's Hall. I actually had a good talk with uh, Gregory Iron about um, that building uh, that we we caught a little bit of interview for that. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to do something with here sooner or later. Um, but also, uh, uh, Brian Pillman Jr. I got to see him wrestle for the first time and I got to, I got to, you got, you got, if you have a chance, check this guy out. Um, he's, he's even, uh, homaging a little bit and has a, a holiday, Hol- Hollywood blondes, um, tights he's been wearing. Um, so, uh, in, in homage to his dad or just Steve Austin, I don't know. <laughs> so probably a little bit of both, but, uh, that was a lot of fun, but, but, Indie wrestling is weird, you guys. Um, there was a deathmatch wrestling um, feature, mm. including uh, right there in the in the uh, in the teaser image um, is our friend G Raver uh, taking a light tube to his face. Uh, I have told him. A lit light tube. I tell him every time I see him, um, "You're a crazy fucker," and I worry about you. Mm-hmm. I tell him every time I see him, and I got to catch up with him at Blackcraft Wrestling uh, when they debuted here um, a little bit ago. But uh, the hardcore world of deathmatch wrestling. So this is uh, and this is something I heard uh, again. Uh, another uh, chat I had with DJ Z um, on Never Saturday. Been. I say that to see sorry, how. Sorry, it's it's a reflex at this point. Is DJ Z on that awesome show you're going to be at? Because <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, that's right. You I saw. So. That's right. We were just talking about. It. You saw him do the the DJ and they play the the air horn at uh, the Lucha show. Yes. But um, out of this, and I'm waiting for the article to load so I can grab uh, uh, the name of the promotion, but there's apparently a promotion, a no-ring independent wrestling promotion that I'm there's fascinated There's a couple by. of those now. Is there a couple of those now? Bar Wrestling doesn't do that, right? They actually have a ring. No, Bar Wrestling doesn't do that. Um, no, they, they're just like, hey, we're wrestling in the bar, yeah. and we're run by Joey Ryan. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, I forget what the name, what, what, what the one that I'm thinking of is called. Maybe it's the same... I, maybe it's the same thing. I'm just blanking on the name. Hmm. Uh, I want to pull I, it up. I know there's one that's just like wrestling on in a arena, in, or in a in a bar. Yeah, and this is this is Nothing. a very bar based one. There's a whole video on it actually, and uh, actually here it is a little bit uh, for you guys on video. <clears throat> yeah, you're just they're just in the bar. They are surrounded by people. Looks like a bunch of hipsters, um, and uh, they just do hardcore wrestling right there in the bar it's amazing um i don't know i like a spectacle like this looks like something i would have seen at the gathering of the juggalos actually i kind of did now that i think about it uh so um go check that out it was interesting to be featured there's been a lot of deathmatch wrestling and there's g raver with some light tubes too um right by a, a, a case of corona um they're they're there's been a lot of features on deathmatch wrestling, like all around on, on some of these bigger platforms like vice. And, um, it was a bleacher report might've done a big one that had Randy West and a few other ones as well. Uh, so it's been really kind of on, on the forefront lately, but it's also kind of a spectacle, isn't it? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, is it something that I think is really viable or could last? No, 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 no. but, but it's something, it's someone that's trying to be different. Yeah, and it's a way to stick out, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's my kind of sentiment, too. I'm like, I'm not really too much into it, but I'm not mm. going to be the one who goes at people who go to those things and go, mm. what the hell are you doing? And, and I'm, I'm, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Because uh, 
there's just there is those niche people that that think or that, that like the ECW style, that like the CZW's Tournament of Death or Cage of Death or anything with death in it. Um, but just I I personally can't get into it. I I, I, I and like I said I don't know why I can't get into it, but maybe because. I'm not really that into that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, and, I, and I think it's, it's um, much like, like we love, like, I mean, Riz, you know, I'm talking to you and you're, you're a big fan. You know, apparently Samoa Joe is invading AJ's home on SmackDown yeah. right now. Um, he has a mailbox that says styles on it. <laughs> I can't wait to watch this. Um, but anyways, Claire, it's actually Claire Lynch. Oh, yeah. I'm kidding. Riz, um, I mean, you you watch, for instance, Chikara, which is something different, mm-hmm. and people uh, archive a big battle, and people, people say explicitly is not wrestling, quote, not wrestling. Um, Jim Cornette. Jim, um, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this 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 is just the other extreme of that, isn't it? This is this is this is the non kid friendly version. of Yeah, that. this is a spectacle, like, right? This is, and I'm I'm pretty sure there's that there's that Venn diagram of people who like that stuff and people who like the Shikara and Kitty stuff. Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure that that middle spot, there's a whole bunch of people in there. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's Lucha Underground. I could see that. I could actually see that a little bit. I mean, because they, they, because Shikara does use, uh, like for King of Trios, they, they do have, they do branch out into, the triple A's and Sendai girls and, mm-hmm. and mixes every little, like the melting pot of everything in wrestling. Yeah. So I can, I can actually see that happening, but like, I can't, I can't get into breaking light bulbs over people's heads mm-hmm. just because they're light bulbs. It's kind of, cool. it's kind of cool like, to watch in person. Have you ever it, seen it, a death uh, match? No, I have not. <laughs> and no, you're not taking me to the Juggalos to see see that stuff. Ah, oh, come on, Riz. Um, but no, like, 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 it's like it, it gets too much. Like I, I get mm. squeamish. Like we, like the 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 videos of Dean Ambrose as uh, John Moxley as John Moxley with the the um, weed whacker to the face. Right. That shit looked horrible Mm -hmm. but i I understand that people that there's people the people do like that stuff like alex miller in the chat room he says he loves deathmatch wrestling good you see see no 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 we all have our opinions about wrestling it's a it's a subjective art form there are people that like that stuff there's people that don't like that stuff there's people in the middle Mm -hmm. so and there's this happens like uh, some of our, you know, people we, we talked to people from uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. They kind of made a pivot, went to West Virginia, and um, and again, these are people. These are some of these guys are the same guys that are involved in Blackcraft Wrestling. Um, they do they do the uh, Lord of Anarchy tournament and and do death match shows down there now. It's not far, so Riz, I don't have to take you to the gathering, but but even as far as that goes, I look at what they're doing there, and while creative. Is kind of again too much, right? Right. So, um, like even even my producer Missy is just yelling "pivot" at me in the chat. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I mean, no, it just it just seems like I don't know. Like I don't I don't begrudge people who like the deathmatch style of wrestling. Mm-hmm. I just feel a lot of people have become desensitized to it because YouTube is a thing that exists. Maybe we need to have a and panel if, on. You, maybe we have to have a, a panel on deathmatch wrestling like we, like we did in like, gender. So it, it's this isn't really deathmatchy type, mm-hmm. but the Fight Society promotion that, that's in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yes, that's you also haven't been to that either. No, I have. You have. Yeah. Oh. I was I was sitting next to you, Sorg. Um, oh yeah, yeah that's it, right. I did take you. That was an interesting concept. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't violence after violence after violence after violence. Like I can deal with that. 
and have like the intermission. It was a it was a different totally... concept around wrestling, right? And then <clears throat> they do hardcore, but they're not doing death yeah, match. It, they're not doing yeah. Like, Light tubes. To the like, head listen, Shirley Doe is gonna kick. Is gonna hit you in the head with the with the fucking chair. Like, that's gonna oh, happen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I mean you but, personally. No, don't no. Ty Cross says take to take you to rise so you learn you learn who the hell he is. <laughs> Who's Ty Cross? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, no. I, I don't know. I just. It just. It just seems like. There, there's it seems not, too much. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's. A bit, I think I think that's what you're going with. That. Like, like the the deathmatch wrestling became popularized because of ECW. Yeah, when the, when the '90s were like a time of excess and well, shock jocks and stuff like that. Yeah, and now I think like, I think the the narrative has kind of evolved past that. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of it's become a niche, and it's um it, it's kind of. And and some people work it to a T and get their moments and get get noticed and get more bookings and you know, um, but you know it's uh, it's interesting. You know what else is interesting? And I can think of no segue in relation other than the color red Ooh, can I, can to deathmatch wrestling. Wait, 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 Riz. Is it pizza? <gasps> it is pizza. Yes. It is pizza. Yes. The thing you maybe don't want to eat while you're watching bloody deathmatch wrestling, or maybe you do. Maybe it could be the perfect know. compliment. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, right up the street from our studio here in the Beachview neighborhood on Broadway, is the OG, the original, as well as other locations at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, over at Carnegie PA, over on the East End, where Riz frequents where a lot. Right? Yes, Riz. It was a Friday. Riz has been enjoying it. Why wouldn't I enjoy it? I'm just saying you have been, but you have been. I know. Like, I went in. The guy says, "Hey, you're Riz from the Wrestling Mayhem Show." Hey, you're that Riz guy. I thought you'd be taller. My foot was not on the door, so I get like you know, I I get high fives for that. Yay! Um, But it it's really. Freaking good pizza. It's freaking good pizza. I didn't want to swear on this. On, on their ad. Yes, no, I got you. I didn't want to swear on their ad. It is the perfect pepperoni pizza for pop, for, for podcasting. For pups? In for by your fans or your dog? For what? pups and podcasting. For pups, for podcasting pups. This ad has completely <laughs> gone off Keep the Keep going, Sorg. Keep going. Check them out. Slice on Broadway. And ho, hey. There's the Riz in front of the Slice on Broadway door. Oh, there I am. There he is. Back on September 19th. He's hungry. SliceOnBroadway.com. PJ's underscore Slice on the Twitter. We'll be back with a big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. I think Ty Cross is doing his Indie Mayhem show interview in the chat room. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> He's just telling me stories. What's up? Um, all right. Dun, 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 dun. Theme music, commercial, and we're back. Hey, guys. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm here hanging. Sorg. It's Riz. It's Mad Hi. Mike. We're all here. Hi. Talking wrestling. Talking about indie wrestling. I don't know why we're doing that here. We used to just not do that on the show. Now the guy's not around anymore. We just talk about indie wrestling whenever the hell we feel like it. But it gets fun, right? <laughs> yeah, we want weird stories. Uh, it's getting fun. We got an indie wrestler in the chat room. We're talking about deathmatch wrestling, and um, and, uh, and 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 there was some stuff. Man, there was a lot of fun stuff from the indies on the on the Facebook group this week. Um, we got this picture from Alex Miller out there in uh, in Cali, and uh, it's it's uh, one of those like it looks like it's probably his like like Instagram story or something. I keep going to this empty couch. Hey guys, here's an empty couch if you're on video. Uh, but uh, man it just says uh, ready for some w. ready for some wrestling at the fair. And let me illustrate. It looks like <clears> we're in the bleachers. It looks like we're on a dirt track that there was probably most likely very recently a tractor pull or demolition derby. I hope at the same time as this wrestling ring in the middle. There's nobody around the wrestling ring. It's not like they put it up against the bleachers or anything. It's in the middle of the track. And it's out there, and and when I was very excited about it, 
he sent us video of wrestling in action. And I understand that Nacho Libre was involved in this. Oh, I love indie wrestling. <laughs> so with that, with the Deathmatch Wrestling discussions, I wanted to ask the big question. Guys, what is the weirdest shit you've seen in pro wrestling? <laughs> Leaning towards the indie wrestling side, but we're going to okay. make an excuse for um, at least one of our, our determinations tonight. Riz, you've watched a lot of indie wrestling. I did, and um, I was flopping between back back and forth between one and the other. Uh, so I want to make the weirdest thing I've seen recently <laughs> pop up. Okay. Uh, and th- this actually happened a while ago. Mm-hmm. Uh Probably one of the first times I've met you, Sorg. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was at uh, was it baseball? Is that what at Ellsworth? Is that what where? Is, yes. Where they had that. Um, so wait, wait, wait. You say this is what this is a recent one. We're talking like two thousand seven. No, because the other one is from. I'm thinking like in the early nineties. Okay. Okay. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, no, uh, but two things stick out in my mind during this during this uh, event. One, it it seemed like the the entrance was all the way into like center. No, it was like it was close to the third base line. Yeah, we were in center field with the ring, fans around ring. it, no stands fans because this is just a local it. ball field. And all I can remember is every single wrestler had to be taken by a car, mm-hmm. by a truck on the back, and they all have to pose and like do everything, except for Delirious, who ran from wherever they were stationed at mm-hmm. to the ring. Mm-hmm. And it was it was probably around 90, 95 degrees out. It was hot. Uh, hentai was uh, in super hentai was in all like black garb Mm -hmm. he didn't like it first of all Mm -mm. and uh the other remember the other memory Uh, i have by the way i gotta say the next year the next year they did it um not on the field because it was it was raining um so up on a a, a, um like the side kind of parking lot Mm -hmm. and i remember you know it being hot and sunny out and super hentai was selling the mat being hot yeah yeah, maybe that was. Maybe, I thought that was the one I was at. Maybe I wasn't. Maybe I was at both. I'm not sure. But all I can remember from the other, from my other memory for that moment, was that there was a band, like off into the side. Oh, like, that was the, yeah. That was the second one. That was the second one. Okay, I yeah. think that was the one I was at. Oh, oh yeah, it was the one you were at. And every like all of the wrestlers were. First of all, they were fucking wasted. Yes, <laughs> like, they were smashed. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the promoter. There are a lot of glowy things around. That's, mm. that's the, the, the promoter uh, came out, started started swearing at the band that kept on playing during the matches, um, and it was just like it was almost riot like, I guess you can say, <laughs> but not really because uh, the only real fight that happened was uh, Marshall the Bull Gambino. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, fan. That's where we uh, to see which that. Is interesting, uh, but yeah, that was so fucking weird. And if if it does come back to me, I do have a young Riz story. Okay, okay, we might want to we might roll back to that. Uh, Mad yeah. Mike, Mike, again, you have not been to too many indie shows, and I have not. and Riz just took all of yours I from that one yours. instance. I'm sorry. Yep. No, no, it's fine. Um, uh, see. Because I, I haven't been to a lot of indie, like most of the wrestling shows I've been to, have been like the big companies. Yeah. But um, I will say. I I will say, the the one time I went to the Impact Zone, in Florida, um, the stuff I saw in the ring was pretty pretty generic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rhino fought through the crowd mm-hmm. right in front of us, which was kind of fun, but um. On the line to get in, I think I've told this story before, but it bears repeating. Um, we're all waiting to get into the impact zone. You know, it's hot. 
it, it's it's the middle of July. It's for Victory Road. And all of a sudden, like there's a there's a giant divider between us and like if you watch Impact, you know where the wrestlers enter, where they where yeah. they pull their cars up and everything. Yeah. All of a sudden, we online we hear a lot of screaming. None of us know what's going on, and then as as if by some form of magic. Bob Backlund <laughs> pops up on top of one of the dividers. I'm pretty sure he's just holding himself up there with his upper arms. And all you see is a giant bald head and a big ass red bow tie screaming at us, asking us why we're standing on line. <laughs> like just irrationally screaming at us. He threw out some $10 words because that's what Bob Backlund do. And then he just popped away like it was a like it was a defective game of whack-a-mole. <laughs> and I'm just I just turned to my dad. I'm like we're going to see him wrestle tonight. <laughs> it was just very odd. So that's like that's like the the oddest thing I can think of besides at my first indie show in Pittsburgh sitting on a chair and having that chair collapse under me, thus giving me my first chair bump. Mm. <laughs> the weirdest thing I've seen. I've seen a lot of weird. I was thinking back to the time I saw Vampiro win the JCW championship from Sabu in 2001 in Toledo at the Gathering of the Juggalos, and everybody joined him in the ring, and it collapsed, which also reminded me of the time Rhino and, and uh, Jason Bain were fighting on I pay per view I was filming ringside, and the ring collapsed. And then years um, later, Vampiro told us to eat a bag of dicks. Oh, yeah. That was a nice thread to pull that together. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we still never found out how many dicks uh, uh, he told Joe to he could. Mm. Okay. Anyways. Um, but uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all more weekend. I should have asked him. Uh, but anyways, um, the weirdest thing. I mentioned Jason Gorey off air about some experiences I had in uh, uh, Cleveland this weekend. Um. Uh, what was the guy's name? Dino? Riz, do you remember this guy in IWC when they had a few of the Japanese guys come in? It's It was Dino something. This was like... He's got a fun years gimmick. Years ago? He's got a fun gimmick. And, you know, back before we had our, uh, you know, kind of crossover wrestlers, your Exilicious and your, you know, I, I, I would maybe sort of count Velveteen Dream to a point. Our flam- Let's just say our flamboyant wrestlers are, are kind of a regular thing now, right? Um, yeah. but, but, you know, Japan, they got started a little early. And, uh, and of course, uh, he, he's teaming with sexual Strike harassment. Dino, isn't it? The Strike of Dino, yes, yes. Yeah, um, he's teaming... Oh, well, you got, you got some memories from this? Uh, no, because he is world famous, Sword. Yeah, because he's done some stuff recently that, that went viral, right? He was the first dick he was the first Joey Ryan Dexlip. Oh, of yeah, course. He was the Joey Ryan Dexlip. Well, he was doing some stuff, and sexual harassment <laughs> was their sexual harassment, right? They're doing some of that stuff too. And uh, but at one point, Dino uh, and taking on Jason Gory, and I forget who Gory was teaming with, probably like Shima or Facade or something <laughs> like that, uh, six man tag. And uh, he he gets Gory up, getting ready for a pile driver. But he puts Gory's head in his pants yeah. and yeah, delivers exactly the pile right. driver. Yep. Yep. Uh, that, in all my years, was probably the, one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. That's yeah. Right. That's right. And I saw a home versus hair match between Mosh Pit, Mosh Pit Mike and uh, Homeless Jimmy this year. That just seems like made up. That, that one seems the like home, it was like the a, home it was definitely a, sounds like you made a you you got you a made, mad, like a mad libs said. book on indie, on indie wrestling. Nope, that's you how they book JCW. Fill in a noun, a name, <laughs> an occupation. <laughs> no, it <laughs> it was Mosh Pick Mike had had the hair. Homeless Jimmy had the home of a shopping cart that he pushed to the right, and uh, and when they when when homeless Jimmy lost, they they threw the uh, shopping cart out to the crowd, and the crowd took the shopping cart. <laughs> yes, wow, that's a thing that happened. And you wonder why I go to the gathering every year. 
Uh, no, no, we don't. Sorry, still, we do please. not. We do not wonder. <laughs> we know exactly why. Yes. Oops. Uh, but no, what? Oops. No, no. That's just a fringe benefit. Uh, Wheel says the weirdest, craziest thing he's ever seen is him being used as a weapon against the against the necro yeah. butcher. That is right. This we it totally wouldn't be. That has that. to be brought up once every three months on this show. Yes, he was wheeled by our friend Jimmy DeMarco. Um, shoved in the direction of Necro Butcher in a match that spilled out to the crowd. Um, we don't know. We don't know if Necro Butcher is afraid of uh, people in wheelchairs or black people. We have not figured that out yet, but he, he, we we that th- that's a thing that happened. Wheels, wheels, that wheels was a transformer. <laughs> that could be um, too. That could be too. Uh, this is a person. Is actually, wheels is actually the first domestic object to be used in wrestling. Ah. Uh, it's always foreign, but no, Wheels is 100% American. That's right. That's fuck. I need to find that and make a gif of it. Uh, make a note! Alex Miller says the weirdest thing he's seen is a match called a Get Stoned match. Uh, the way it works is every 30 seconds you have to take a puff and you get hungry uh, and there's food in the corners. No, I saw that at the no. gathering. They, did, they saw that a couple years ago at the mm-hmm. gathering. No. Yeah, yeah. Just smoking up like every... every uh, I, I think it was... 90 seconds 60 seconds in the one and there was like giant bags of uh like funyuns and stuff that they would like throw each other on and the funyuns would go everywhere it was it was just a lot of fun Might well been... yeah that's like that's like those beer softball games yeah <laughs> yeah just to like it weed. just well, it, like it, it is <laughs> um it is. Like, let's see like, i would imagine like it'd be more fun if they had like a uh, a bull rope match but it's a billabong match where there's a bong in every ring post, and you have to smoke a bowl at each turnbuckle. Like, do a bong rip at each turnbuckle, and you have to hit, rem- you have to remember how many you've hit. <laughs> <laughs> we at the Wrestling Mayhem Show do not condone smoking bongs. Hits every time somebody mentions bongs. Please do not do that. Uh, even though um, some of us on the Wrestling Mayhem Show may not see anything wrong with that. I say you do you. It's <laughs> legal in certain states. I said... We don't condone it. Do not put my name on it. <laughs> okay, all right. I condone uh, it. And then okay. we became the Joe Rogan Show. Anyways, uh, let us know what you think. Uh, what was the weirdest? What's the weirdest shit you've seen at indie <laughs> wrestling? I see weird shit every <laughs> other month at this point. Jeez, oh, uh, crazy stuff. Right, Riz? Right. You saw a mother get pile driver one time. I forgot that moment. Yeah. We uh, had uh, Rev that. Ron Hunt had a very um, uh, potentially offensive religious mask during his cage match last month. Oh, yes, it was interesting. It was interesting. Um, the video of that uh, it, it, with the intro is uh, over at the Indie Wrestling US Facebook and YouTube page. Um, um, the cage match between uh, Ron Rev Hunt, Rev Ron Hunt, and Chris Taylor. Okay, guys, this is the point where I talk about something. <laughs> where you talk about something? Where so I talk like about this, something that Missy... Should we not that, even pay attention to this point? That producer... No, no, no. You should pay, you should pay attention because we're talking no, he, about... No, that's the wrong show. I pulled up the wrong document, guys. Um, What's your awesome thing of the week? Sorry. No, no, no. That's, you know that's the document I pulled up. It'd be the Lyft driver... No, 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 no. 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 Zombie bar. Uh no, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Riz. Oh, professional. Can you tell I haven't slept much the last few days? Um, but anyways, Occupy Pro you Wrestling. Ever sleep? Did, did I, you know what? I try, and then, and then I watch Raw, Raw, and then I try again, and and then other things happen. Uh no, our friends at Occupy Wrestling Pro Wrestling dot com, great supporters of the show here, you guys. And we wanted to give them a shout out. Pro wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, and Pro- Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun, featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back in a smart mark. Please check it out at occupyprowrestling.com and go look up the Occupy Pro Wrestling store over there on the uh, What a Maneuver website as well. They got some Ooh. cool stuff over there. Some designs from some guy named Alex Cars. Like, oh, there's a Marco, uh, a uh, Smarco's Modern Life t-shirt. Really liking those Nickelodeon uh, crossovers as well. 
So go check it out. I, I really dig his uh, Smirk uh, Snick shirt. Oh, is that is that? Uh, I think it's this one right here. Yeah. 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 No, those are those are pretty cool. Those are a lot of fun. We should get there should be a Smarky like we should get one for Smarky the Turtle. We so. should, even though he doesn't deserve it. Smarky the Turtle. Well, you got heat with the Marky the Turtle. I mean, I'm just saying Larusa did the right thing. That's all. Oh, jeez. <sighs> That's it. Jeez. I hope Bobby isn't listening. Um. So, uh, Ty Cross. Oh, I got one. That time Edric and I curled Keith hot. Yeah, they were curling. Oh no, they curled like Canadian. The the Olympic sport. They 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 curled Keith hot into what? the other team. Um, no, you know, they sweeped and and they 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 kind of pushed them and and it was a. It's hard to explain. They, start, they yell. They they start yelling. Like, yeah, yeah, I think so. Oh, I think nice. so. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know they. Were I mean, Canadian. that sounds totally logical to me. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, we got an update. Uh, we got an update. Uh, you know, I kept uh, accidentally shooting the uh, empty couch. Um, well, it looks like um, the the empty couch got filled with something, and uh, somebody something? put a picture of Virgil on our empty couch. So, is it Virgil? He's very lonely. You owe him. You owe him like thirty bucks now. I'm sure I do for this appearance on the Wrestling Mayhem show, right? Oh yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <sighs> Oh, well, there goes oh. there goes the Patreon money for this Yep, month. yep. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Usually we <laughs> help keep the lights on and we pay some of the internet bills. This month it's going to Virgil. Uh, so, <laughs> jeez. Did you see the one? Did you see the one? Uh, you know, I love that Zach Gowan retweeted the um, video of the guy with no legs wrestling. <laughs> did you see it? Like professionally. Yes, like, like pro- <laughs> yes, in a professional wrestling ring. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he had like no legs. He's doing a lot of uh, fun torso stuff. He even at one point, I think he, I think he like, hold on, I want to get to the end here. He ends up climbing the ropes. No, no, no. He, he, he so he does like a flip over the top ropes. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, but that, that's awesome that, that you get something like that out there. Already Jim Cornette probably hates him. Oh, Jim Cornette hates the shit out of this right now. Jim right? Cornette has already blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, all right. From there, um, I don't know, guys. What are you guys watching these days? I, like I said, this is a very off the cuff show this week. Wow. That was, that, that, wow. That's a, um, this hasn't been. I haven't been uh, like on the on the show on on the network. I keep on watching all these hidden gems that they they keep updating. Mm-hmm. And one of them caught my eye a few weeks ago. Uh, it was it was called Star Wars. What? Yeah, it was pretty fucking awesome. Like I'm, I'm, I keep, I have to go back and like focus on it. It was Star Wars eighty one, I believe. Okay. But yeah, it's. Wait, what? I, pro- what promotion? I is forget this? what promotion it was. I forget everything else. I just remember the name because. Fucking Star Wars. Um. So well, I have a Star Wars celebration with uh, uh, uh culture shock with Corey Graves. That's I have, let's see, you said it's under Hidden Gems? Yeah. I'm not seeing one under <laughs> Hidden Gems. Are you sure it was Star Wars? I am sh- I am sure it's called Star Wars. Okay, we'll have to look at that. I mean, they also have, they do have, like, the Rock and Wrestling, not the Rock and Wrestling, but the, um, res- oh, Wrestle Rock? What was the show? It was like an AWA thing, I think. The Wrestle Rock Rumble. Thank Wrestle you. Rumble Thank yeah. you. Like they have that. I think that's under a hidden gems, maybe, or under AWA or something. Like because it's yeah, weird. Uh, it was WCW uh, Wrestling Star Wars 1981. You could have Big Scott Hall. Jeez. Big Scott, Big Scott Hall is in that music video, just walking out of a pool. That <laughs> <laughs> was looking all big and hairy. Oh jeez! Wow, okay. they've they've really kind of they've kind of reached out here. There's a uh, glorious beginnings. It looks like they have a match of uh, Bobby Roode 
on looks like velocity. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Going well. You can, you can well, actually play in uh, velocity on uh, WWE 2K19. Oh, yeah. Due to the uh, Daniel Bryan storyline. Oh, it starts him off like with his. Uh... He start, they start you off against John Cena mm-hmm. on velocity. Jeez. Like the word life John Cena. Wow. On velocity. They are digging deep on everybody's jobber matches going in. Dean, Dean Ambrose uh, uh, teaming with uh, Brad Taylor to take on uh, Eminem as John Moxley. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, so, uh, they're, they're, you can roll deep on some on some real classic stuff in WWE Network. You saw a happy Samoa Joe at one point. That's, 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 that's just ah. because he didn't know what was going to happen to him. Samoa oh, Joe. Oh shit! Or Joey Samoe, one of the two. There <laughs> is, I, I'm sorry, now I'm digging deep with this. There's, there's a one on here called Festival de Lucha. It's a unaired pilot of Festival de Lucha, which looks like just a a, 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 a Spanish WCW show. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Of course, oh, yeah. of course Mad uh, Mike there knows was, about this. There was a hidden gem a while ago uh, that had uh, The Undertaker as Mean Mark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that when uh, like I, there was like some gifts going around for a while? It was uh, before his uh, debut as Forever Series. Like it was just like, yeah. Uh, some oh, tryout matches basically. Wait, he's in WWF as Mean Mark. Yeah. Oh. Because yeah. you usually see like the other stuff, like the WCW and everything like that, right? Yeah, I think I think he was actually Mean Mark Calloway. Yeah. Oh man. In, in WWE, believe, like like one or two matches. I believe there was even a really deep indie show on a network with the undertakers appearing mm-hmm. facing Kane before he was Kane or yeah. Isaac Yankum. I think he I think he was Isaac Yankum. He, you know why he was an Isaac Yankum back then. Oh well, he, there no, was an no, actual yeah. like match with him with with a mullet and everything. Like it wasn't it wasn't Isaac was, Yankum DDS. Was he the Unabomber or Glenn was, Jacobs? Was he was Unabom, probably. It was Unabomber. It was Unabomber. No, 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 not Unabomber. That's a whole different guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's a different context, sir. He was just Unabom. Unabom. Yeah, that, um, that was it. That was it. It was Undertaker versus Ty, Unabom. Ty Cross is in the chat, and he's talking about... Who's Ty Cross? You keep saying Ty Cross. This Ty Cross guy in the chat room keeps talking a lot. <laughs> he says, he's a wrestler. I'm, 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 I love he struggles. Whatever somebody he knows is on, he struggles the entire show to get them to say his name once. And then we're, uh, he says, I'm currently reading the Bret Hart book and rewatching his biggest matches as I go. Only, only this time I know some backstage information, and I also know how often he was uh, cheating on his wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay um but the, okay that wasn't the point i was trying to get Sorry. to on this but that's a fun thing we can do now because i i had that where i was um i i was doing some work listening back to um eric bischoff's 83 weeks podcast and they were talking about which was it, it they were talking about a specific show i want to say it was uh i think it was a fall it was the fall brawl i believe with um uh warrior on it uh, oh, with the war God. games, oh. yeah. yeah we're, oh. So they're going, they're going match by like they're watching it live at least, right? And I, I didn't do that, but I kind of like wanted to start pulling it up as they were discussing things. And I've done this with some other shows, like when they did first Nitro and stuff like that, right? Um, and like that's that's so easy to do that now, right? Or or uh, we were listening to um, on the way out to Cleveland, we we're listening to um, How to Wrestle. Uh, Rob listens to that one. They're talking about. Um, no, it was not that one. It was a Bruce Pritchard podcast. And they were talking about Unforgiven 2008, where they had all the scramble matches. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, like listening back to this, I'm like, I don't remember a lot of this, right? But I can kind of remember Brian, it. Brian Kendrick was technically an interim WWE champion yes, for like six minutes. Yes, he for was. Like six minutes. Yeah, because there were scrambles, and it's just basically whoever got the last fall after the time expired is the champion. Yes. Was that because there was like some sort of like poisoning or something like that during? No, no, no. That wasn't that. That wasn't that. But it was. No, no, no. This, it was a planned match. It this, was two yeah. planned matches. No, it was three. They did it with the ECW title as well. That's oh. right. That's yes. right. Yeah. And then, but this is also the time where uh, Chris Jericho had just punched Shawn Michaels' wife. 
and yeah. we had an unsanctioned street fight. Also, yep. we dropped the title off of CM Punk, his first world title after Money in the Bank, um, by beating him up backstage and re- replacing him with Chris Jericho. Yes. Mm-hmm. That was the whole impetus for the Randy Orton feud. Yep. That he had later because it was Legacy that beat him down, right? Yep. Yep. And, and, and Legacy at that time was... Cody, Ted, and I want to say Manu. Manu, Manu debuted at this show. Yeah. Manu shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 remember, I remember that from what's happening with Scotty Goldman. Like just, just him going, Manu best friend, Manu, Manu shoes. My man Manu. Oh jeez, um, my new what? But anyways, the point it. was, I was like, I don't know about this. So like, while while Rob just, Rob was driving, I'm gonna say just for safety concerns. Um, and I got to pull up on the network on my phone, like this show, and I'm watching points of it here and there as they're talking about, it. just like pulling up the match to see, like, oh, see if it jogs my memory a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I, I love that we can do this kind of. It's enabled this kind of like multi layering layering of uh of revisiting history because just like hey let's just go watch unforgiven 2008 for some reason what the fuck was that um a couple years ago we were doing like the watch party yeah yeah i mean you can do stuff like that but now but then now you have the people that were there yeah you know doing that and i think that's my favorite thing if you go on wwe's youtube they have this thing called wwe playback where it's the wrestlers watching their own matches mm-hmm. on the network. Mm-hmm. Like I actually just watched one a couple of days ago. It was the New Day and the Usos watching their Hell in a, their tag team Hell in a Cell match. Nice. Uh, there was 3MB watching the WLC match mm-hmm. with patching with patching Hornswoggle in on like Skype or, or oh yeah or yeah I've ever seen a clip of that yeah that's awesome. Um, but hey, and, and there's also one of uh Charlotte and Becky watching Becky's first title win, um, in happier times. That was popular <laughs> in happier times, in happier times, yeah, yeah. Oh man, you guys. Well, guys, hey, I want to give a shout out. Um, we we got something, um, the Ty Cross, the sh- <laughs> the Ty Cross, who was not a part. Not a part, you guys, of Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. No. And I'm I'm realizing that my my document did not update on my phone, so I can read this copy. But Ty Cross, not a part of Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh. No, he was not. But who was? Sorry. But you know who was? Caristico. You know who Caristico is? The he's former, the, the original Mystico and no, the no, original Sincaro. Cool. Yes, yes, that guy. Um, the Ultimo Dragon. Sam the Adonis, fucking dragon. Yeah, yes, the ultimate f- fucking swear. dragon. Riz, you were you were there at this show. I was there in person. You can see the little dot in the picture that reflects him. You can point me. It's like it's like where's Waldo? Right there, where? right there. I'm pointing to it, but yeah. it's on a computer it's screen, not, and it's not you, working. you you can't see that. Riz, how was this show that is going to be available? Uh, September 27th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time uh, on Fight TV for $9.99. It was one of the most... It was one of the coolest experiences I had in indie wrestling. Mm-hmm. And you've, in, as any, we've established... In, in if I was, as we've established, you've watched a lot of indie wrestling. I've watched a lot of indie wrestling, and this is one of the best experiences I had. Like, And I saw Ultimo Dragon wrestle. And I saw Sam Adonis as what he is known for and being a, the, the Donald Trump heel mm-hmm. in, in the United States. I saw that. I saw like it, it, it the atmosphere there, the, the, the carnival feel to it. Mm-hmm. It was, there were bouncy the, houses. There were bouncy houses. Sorg, I wanted to wrestle you in a bouncy house. What? I didn't hear this. Yes, you did. Mm. Uh, I did challenge you to. There was else. there was singing in Spanish. There was announcements was in Spanish. Spanish by. Uh, there was mask pulling. There was. Uh, there were there were mask pulling. There was some there very was, exposed. Uh, there were some very exposed manes of hair uh, there, there from were, the mask pulling. There were taco trucks. There were uh, very very cool individuals that I have never seen at a wrestling show before. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Uh, the, you got to hear shocker swear. What was that? You got to hear shocker swear. I got to hear shocker swear. Sorg, do you know what one thousand percent guapo means? I do now. Yes, you do, and you can too. <laughs> <laughs> On fight. That's right. Go out. Go check out Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh over there on a fight did I just go TV. Blue's clues on you there? What's that? Did I just go Blue's Clues on that. You did kind of do that. Part? This week it debuts on Fight TV, featuring Ultima Dragon, Sam Adonis, Bull James, Shocker, Caristico, and so many more getting featured. Facade, uh, uh, Jason Kincaid, uh, Facade Gory, uh, Gory. Yeah, so so many, Beast so Man, many. Your favorite Beast Man. A lot of background videos from Beastman popping Italiano. up this week. What's that? That's right. Mambo Italiano. To further complicate the language barriers of this show, we wow. brought the Italian. Uh, so a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And thank you for bringing Lucha Fiesta here to our neighborhood here in Pittsburgh. I mean, friend of the show, David Lawless, got punched in the face. He did. He did. He did. Um, no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, no yeah. well that's usually a good night when he gets punched in the face he usually deserved it uh yeah. but anyways he's a friend of the show but come on but go check it out at fight.tv uh lucha fiesta pittsburgh and see what everybody's talking about so thanks a lot to that all right guys it's time to find out what did you learn from wrestling this week and please chat room chime in as well hmm. who wants to go I, first i have one I learned that in kayfabe, this is real. The Miz once had a date with Nikki Bella. In wait, in kayfabe or in real? In in, in kayfabe. In kayfabe, that happened. In kayfabe, on SmackDown, this happened. Wait, is this, was this in the Chick Magnet days? This was in the Miz and Morrison days. Oh. Miz and Morrison went on a double date with the Bella Twins. Mm-hmm. And it was um, interrupted by the Colognes. No. Not, not Primo and Epico, Carlito and Primo. I thought you were going to say Carlito and Jesus. No. But I, I stumbled upon this segment in my weekly deep dive of WWE mm-hmm. and I was and I just saw the segment and I'm like oh man which one is Miz dating if because that and I had to watch the whole thing just to try and hear the different voices between Brie and Nikki yeah. because at that point they were actually twins uh, it's before they added to, a pair of twins yeah it's it's before they add the third Bella twins um so I was like, oh, man, if if Miz is technically on a date with Brie, this is a whole nother level to the Daniel Bryan feud. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it wasn't. So it's just a whole nother level to the John Cena feud. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just thought that was really weird. So technically, um, the Miz has dated Bella. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maze that has it brought up. Technically, he's dated two people who have looked like Nikki Bella. Nikki and Maurice as Nikki Bella. <laughs> oh boy. Uh what about, what about you, Riz? Oh I learned that uh I I learned that I'm going to probably Miss seeing uh, Mike Quackenbush wrestle. Did he retire again? Uh, he got injured really bad. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, no. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Uh, let me look here. Was he, it Brie Bella? It was not oh, Brie Bella. It was not oh, Brie Bella. No, no, no. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Sorry. I was vamping while Riz was trying to find he it. Took, he took a chance in trying a very risky move. And this is, I'm reading from his like long ass tweet that he put on here. Uh, the real results that of of the injury were his right e- heel and ankle are charcoal black and can barely, barely fit into his shoe. Ooh. His whole right arm is in a long cast and sling. 
He dislocated a bone in his right arm. Jeez. I mean, he he had to retire because he had his knee totally blown out. Mm-hmm. And he came back and wrestled, fought, uh, I believe, was it Johnny Saint? Uh, he, he wrestled like some really, really good wrestler, technical wrestler, who can put you in so many of these holes. And like it, it's sad because he now can't, wrestle for a long time Mm -hmm. um and he's he is still training that uh beginners program uh he's he's calling it he's going to instruct it like through dictation voice dictation so that's going to be interesting uh but yeah i i hate to see him go because he is one of the he is one of the best technical wrestlers in the world today Absolutely. Absolutely. Jeez. And also, I, I learned that I still don't know who this Thai guy is. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, boy. I, geez. I learned that in pro wrestling, a uh, student show that would be, um, which I consider, like, like a dance recital, right? Everybody goes to see the kids that graduated from the year and, you know, what, what came of it. And sometimes in wrestling, you get that as well. That's been these Proving Grounds shows in the past, right? But I, I learned that a, a, a student show doesn't have to be just a student show. We had five graduates with the International Wrestling Cartel. Then we had DJ Z, Jonathan Crush, <laughs> Dylan Bosick, and like some major talent on the show. And it was like the most well-attended and the most um, uh, amazing vibe, I think, that we've seen at one of these shows. So, again, I think a, a pretty classic match came out of that uh, as well, and I'm looking forward to that. And this place, where is it at? It's just this is from my experiences this week. Also, um, I, 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 Mario came out with Mambo Italiano. That was weird. That was, that's kind of, that, that's, that's kind of. Like super, kinda, like super Mario. That's kind of racist. <laughs> with that's a, with, kinda, a, that's with kinda, pizza. That's kinda really ra- that's, Mambo that's Italiano a, was coming out with pizza on his tights. That's super racist. I don't want to get He's Italian. I, if I was a wrestler, I'd come out with pizza on my tights. I know. And you know what kind of pizza I'd come out with on my tights? Or? What, what, it was Lace on Broadway pizza? Lace on Broadway! Hey! We already did our promo. Yeah, well, I got probably pizza for pile drivers. They get a bonus one. They get a bonus one. Um, from the chat room, we had uh, several um, several responses. Um, nope. Uh, Wheels learned that not everyone should try and walk over the top rope. Did you see this guy? You oh, stepped yeah. over, and then he yeah. bounced off the rope. Out, like he, he didn't get his footing on the other side. So he kind of sat on the top rope and then just teetered out of the ring. Oh, see, that's actually the return of little Jimmy who powerbombed that guy to the floor. Oh, Dave Podner learned that TV shows are better um, with a dance break. Was, hmm. that, was that a wrestling reference? I don't know what show that happened. Maybe, maybe um, SmackDown? Maybe SmackDown? I haven't watched maybe, all Maybe, Maybe Tyrus in his new gig on Fox News did something like that? I don't know. Alex learned that uh, uh, that if you have a false count anywhere match at the fair, someone is going to do something crazy. Oh, related! I learned if you have a scaffolding at a show, Sean Phoenix is going to jump off of it. Yeah. Sean Phoenix yeah. is the new facade in that respect. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I also learned um, that Ghetto from uh, New Japan is. <laughs> Well, one Gato cannot swing a chair worth the damn. No, I think Lee Moriarty retweeted that gif. It says, if I threw a chair, if I swung a chair like that, my trainer would have me, like, flogged if, or yeah. something. Like, his hand was inverted. There was, like, I, I, I looked at it, and I'm like, I can do that better. Ty says there's a TV show called Dancing with the Stars. It's almost exclusively dance breaks. Dude would love it. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, need to look hard for the stars, though. Yeah, oh, no more stories. On oh, truth, truth tonight on SmackDown was apparently in the dance break. Also, Ty Cross learned that I desperately need to get him on the show. 
There you go. Is, he is, de- is desperately the right word? <laughs> is he a wrestler? <laughs> I think he may have wrestled. Huh. He may he may have done a thing. And you can check out Rise Wrestling at IndieWrestling.us. Riz is Riz plays games. Yes, sword. We're gonna do some fun things. Oh, is it happening? Is it, who else is coming? Do we have anyone else lined up for that? I know uh, I rescheduled it. I believe we have. Well, first, Bohemoth's coming. Yes, of course. Friday, I believe Bohemoth yeah, Friday, Invitational, be- Jackbox Games. I believe we do have. Billy Ruxpin as one of the <gasps> people that accepted. We accept our imaginary wrestlers. Uh sure, why not? Uh let me see what else we have. But yeah, uh that's right now we're having wrestlers play Jackbox games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna get the party pack. I have the party pack four. Uh I really wish party pack five was out, but it's gonna be out soon. Um I'm also gonna have the quiplash come out. The, the the one that is actually not in the Jackbox games that is sold separately. I'm going to get that game as well. Uh, it's going to be a great time. Uh, I, I'm inviting you to come along if you want to come in, play some video games with us. Who, who me? Ty, the guy that I keep on. Oh, like, Ty. Yeah, if Ty wants to come up and, Friday. Yeah, go ahead. Come on up. It's gonna be fun. Absolutely. Be, like, like, sort. It, it, you were at the 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 Smash tournament. Mm-hmm. Did you at all think we were gonna get out of there alive? No, no. I thought Thomas Madison, Mathis and uh, and and Honey Badger would be in a very serious fight about the meaning of Thanksgiving. Yeah, I, I still don't get. I still don't get why he has to use it. Use the uh, use his own controllers. That's so nice. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. for Smash, yeah, you have to use your own controller for Smash. No, no, he has his own um, configuration. Oh, he has his own like setup. Yeah. And yeah. it was his system. He uh, he did bring the Wii U. Actually, I think it was our roommates, but still. Okay. Yeah, he's serious. He's serious. He called himself Pittsburgh Pikachu. <laughs> yes. Shocking. <laughs> Oh, uh, jeez. Learned a lot about Thomas Mathis that night. But anyways, hey. Kept on showing his abs for some reason. Yeah, that's his thing. Like, And he also wears white gloves. It's, it's yeah, you you want to hate him a lot. You do want to hate him a lot. <laughs> so, Matt Mike, 4883 on the Twitter. Yep. Uh, you can catch me at some point this week. I will be live tweeting Lucha Underground. Just keep an eye out for at Mayhem Show. Look for the hashtag MM as always. I almost called your your alternate name <laughs> oh, <laughs> that we talked about last Lord. night. I don't want to do that on the show to you. Good Lord. Yes. No, and, and plus, I, I may have an update on that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Do you have a new nickname already? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, great. That didn't last. It. All right. And, of course, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next week on the podcast or live at 9 p.m. Eastern time here on the Facebook Live. Until then, Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.